This conference will now be recorded. First of all, linear programming problems and integer programming problems. I'm sure if you have some background in OR or OM, or if you are a PhD researcher, or if you are a person looking to publish extensively in, in OR or OM related journals, or you are working on OM problem, I'm sure you understand what is IP. IP stands for IP stands for integer programming. Now, how exactly is integer programming different from that of a linear program? As you all know by now, in, in the case of linear programming, we would expect the variables to take fractional values also. Whereas in the case of integer programming, we, we stipulate a condition that variables have to be only integers. They cannot take fractional values. Now you might say, Ram, yeah, what is the big difference? Yeah, in one case, we are allowing variables to take fractional values, whereas in the other case, uh, variables can only take integral values. Now, the difference between these two problems is, is quite significant because for solving linear programming problems, we make use of simplex method. And uh, how, to, how does simplex method work? In a nutshell, if I were to explain how simplex method works, simplex method simply checks the vertices of the feasible region. It evaluates the objective function at the vertices of the feasible region and whichever vertex is the best in terms of whether it is minimization or maximization, it is going to choose that as the final solution. That's how simplex method works. Iteratively, it traverses from one vertex to another vertex until it eventually converges to optimality. The moment we define variables or the moment we define an optimization problem as an integer programming problem, the feasible region is no more continuous. The feasible region becomes discrete. So instead of a continuous feasible region, we will only have a set of points as feasible region. Now, how does it affect uh, the solution methodology? Yes. For integer programming problems, the optimal solution need not have to necessarily lie at one of the vertices of the feasible region. The optimal solution can indeed lie inside the feasible region also, which means simplex method cannot be used for solving integer programming problems. Am I clear? One. We have linear programming problems and we have integer programming problems. Linear programming problems are much, much easier because, because of the convenient mathematical property of locating the optimum always at one of the vertices of the feasible region. Whereas for integer programming problems, the optimal solution can lie on the periphery of the feasible region, inside the feasible region or, one, or at one of the vertices of the feasible region. So, while solving integer programming problems, we have to use a different method. Now, uh, at least some of the names that I see in the, in the participant window are quite familiar. Dr. Jitendra, Dr. Deepthi, so at least quite a few participants were quite active in the last session. I'm hoping there will be more uh, active participation from others as well today. Uh, also, needless to say, like what I said earlier, you're free to interrupt me anywhere you like if you think something needs to be repeated once again. Now, having, uh, give, having given you the difference between linear programming and integer programming, now let me focus on the first point, P, NP, NP hard and NP complete problems. P, so P and NP, uh, now uh, some of you might know the answer for this. P stands for polynomial, whereas NP stands for non-deterministic polynomial. I'm repeating, P stands for polynomial, whereas NP stands for non-deterministic polynomial. Now, in simple words, if you ask me, so all the optimization problems can be classified into broadly two categories, P category problem and NP category problem. 
Now, if you ask me, Ram, so what? I mean, if it is a P problem, so what? In P problem, so what? The answer is very simple. P problems are easier problems. In, in layman terminology, I can say that P problems are easy problems. When I say easy, they are easy to solve. Whatever be the size of the problem, it should be possible for us to solve those problems in reasonable amount of time. So imagine a graph. On x-axis, we have size of the problem. And on y-axis, we have time. If I could develop a polynomial expression to represent the time taken to solve the problem, uh, it's, it's called a p-category problem, meaning the computational time can be expressed in the form of a polynomial with respect to the size of the problem. Whereas NP problems, the, the NP stands for non-deterministic polynomial. Non NP problems, sometimes, you know, they, they may take years to solve. I, I'll give you a quick demo of that. In layman terminology, NP problems are very, very difficult problems. When I say difficult problems, small instances of NP problems, small size problems can be solved in five minutes, 10 minutes. But if I increase the size of the problem, it may sometimes take months or years to solve these problems. In fact, this is a concept that is borrowed from computer science. It's actually a computer science terminology, PNP. NP problems are further divided into NP hard and NP complete. If you ask me, from OR perspective, actually there's no difference between NP hard and NP complete. They are equally difficult to solve. But from computer science perspective, there's a, there a subtle difference between NP hard and NP complete. Given the time limit of one and a half hour, I'm going to skip this. But if you're curious to know what is the difference between NP hard and NP complete, let me just leave a hint. So look on Google, search for something called polynomial transformation. Just search about this particular term, polynomial transformability or polynomial transformation. You will understand what is the difference between NP hard and NP complete problems. But from a OR, from a purely OR perspective, there is actually no difference between NP hard or NP complete. Now, so this is about P and NP hard. Now you might want to know, Ram, can you please give me examples of P category problems and NP category problems? Quite a lot of examples. All linear programming problems, I'm repeating, all linear programming problems come under P category. So for example, simple transportation problem, assignment problem, transshipment problem, shortest path problem, minimum spanning tree problem, maximal flow problem, all these are P category problems. In the sense, whatever be the size of the problem, we should be able to solve it comfortably within 15, 20 minutes. But examples of NP hard or NP complete problems, traveling salesman problem, knapsack problem, facility location problem, convoy moment problem. Likewise, there are plenty of problems that come under NP hard and NP category. I'm repeating. NP hard, NP complete simply means smaller problem sizes can be solved in, in reasonable amount of time. But when we talk about larger problem instances, they are just definitely going to take months or years. You might think basically I'm exaggerating. I mean, will there be an optimization problem which will take months or years to solve? You might think I'm actually exaggerating. So just to prove this particular point, let me show you something interesting. Uh, let me try to share an Excel sheet with you. I'm sure you're able to see the Excel sheet. Okay, what am I going to do is, uh, I'll say number of cities and then number of uh, solutions, seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, and then years. Now look at this. Let us take for the sake of uh, argument purpose, I'm going to take a problem called traveling salesman problem. 
Even if you don't know what is a traveling salesman problem, here I am to explain you. Take traveling salesman problem where there are n number of cities. Let's say there are 10 cities. There is a salesperson who is at city one. Salesperson has to be at one of the cities. So let's say the salesperson is at city one. Now, this salesperson has to start visiting the rest of the cities that are two, three, four, five, etc. He has to visit rest of the cities exactly once and then he has to come back to the city where he started. So basically, we are trying to determine what is the sequence in which the traveling salesman, in this case, the salesman has to visit the cities so that the total distance that he traveled is minimized. This is called traveling salesman problem. In fact, it's a classical problem in OR literature because it is very easy to explain. What is a traveling salesman problem? The problem of determining the sequence of cities to be visited by a salesperson without visiting any city more than once and coming back to the same city where he started is called as traveling salesman problem. Now, this problem is easy to state but very difficult to solve. Just out of curiosity, if I have a 10 city problem, theoretically, and let us assume that the salesperson can visit any city from any city. For example, we assume that all the cities are interconnected. Every pair of cities is interconnected. Can someone unmute themselves and then say, for a 10 city problem, theoretically, how many number of solutions is possible? For a 10 city problem, theoretically, how many number of solutions is possible? It's not difficult. Oh. Maybe it may be nine. Is it only nine, Atish Subhash? Is it only nine? It I is mean, nine factorial. Actually, it is nine right, factorial. Right. Anyway, right, thank nine you for factorial. volunteering. Yeah, please see here. Let me start this way. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Now, if the first city is fixed, it will be n minus 1 factorial. If the first city is not fixed, it will be n factorial. So in this case, it will be number of solutions will be factorial of 5. Now, let us say we are actually given a supercomputer to solve a traveling salesman problem. Just hypothetically, let us assume we are given a supercomputer. Now, a supercomputer is usually expected to solve at least, let's say, 1 lakh or at least 10 lakh solutions per second. It can evaluate 10 lakh solutions per second. So, in terms of solution time in seconds, a supercomputer is likely to evaluate this divided by, I'm just writing 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100 lakh solutions per second, let's assume, which means a supercomputer is going to take 0 0.000012 seconds to solve this particular problem. So if this time has to be expressed in terms of minutes, it will be this divided by 60. And in terms of hours, it's almost equivalent to zero. But anyway, I'll write it, this divided by 60. And then in terms of days, this divided by 24 and finally in terms of month this divided by 30 and finally in terms of years this is equal to this divided by 12. You might think just be a little patient I'll, I'll show you why exactly am I doing all this. Now this is the case for a five city problem. Now let us extrapolate these results to 50 cities. Take a look over there. For a 50 city problem, if we are working on a supercomputer that can evaluate 100 lakh solutions per second in order to solve a 50 city problem, we are likely to take 9.77 into 10 power 49 years. We are talking about 
10 power 49 years, which is more than a billion years. I mean, it's about 100 billion or 1000 billion years. So this is the problem. As I told you earlier, traveling salesman problem is easy to state, but quite difficult to solve. We are talking about 10 power 49 years. Now you might say, Ram, hold on. Maybe we underestimated the power of a supercomputer. Instead of 100 lakhs, maybe we should uh, add some more zeros generously. So let me add one, two, three, four, five, six, six more zeros. I don't know how to read that particular number, but let me extrapolate these results once again. Oh yeah, you can see there. Even if there is a supercomputer which can evaluate uh, 100 crore solutions per second, that supercomputer is going to take 9.77 into 10 power 43 years. Actually, there's no big difference between 10 power 43 and 10 power 49 because in, in both cases, no human is likely to be alive. So, but 50 city problem is not a very big problem. There have been instances in the literature where we talk about huge problems, at least let's say 100 cities, 200 cities, which means this sort of an approach cannot be used for solving traveling salesman problem. If you carefully look at this approach, what we are trying to do is for the traveling salesman problem, let's say we have 10 cities. So 10 city problem will have 36,28,800 solutions. We are trying to evaluate each and every solution and we are trying to see which is the best solution among 36,28,800 solutions. This approach of explicitly enumerating all possible solutions and then choosing the best one is called complete enumeration. Take a look at the Excel sheet. Complete enumeration or exhaustive enumeration. This is one methodology that is available for solving integer programming problems. Complete enumeration or exhaustive enumeration. But you can realize by now that this is not a practical approach at all. I mean, people cannot wait 10 power 43 years just to solve a 50 city problem. For that matter, look at this. Even a 25 city problem is likely to take 50,000 years, which is like unreasonable. I mean, which is like unbelievable and bizarre. Taking 50,000 years for solving a 25 city problem is bizarre. But so this is exactly where heuristics and meta heuristics come into the picture. So is, is it clear until now? Any questions so far? Clear, sir. Clear, sir. Okay, thank you. Now let, let me go back to the PowerPoint slide. So take a look at this. So complete enumeration or exhaust, exhaustive enumeration. That's what complete enumeration is. Where we try to list down some someone has unmuted. Can you please put uh, your mic? So in, in the case of complete enumeration, we try to list down all possible solutions and then we try to choose the best solution. Though theoretically, it might sound like a practical approach, it is not at all practical. That is why I showed you, I gave you the demo in the Excel sheet. Now you might ask me, so what methodologies are available Ram, for solving integer programming problems? The answer is simple. There are three methodologies that are predominantly available to solve integer programming problems. But remember, these three methodologies that you see on the screen, branch and bound, branch and cut, and branch and price. These three methodologies give you optimal solution. They will always give you optimal solution. That's why these three methodologies are called as exact solution methodologies. Exact methodologies means they give us optimal solution. Now, interesting question to ask is how much time will they take? So that is where the problem comes into the picture. Across operations research in optimization, there is only one trade-off and that trade-off is always between 
computational time versus computational quality. I'm repeating across operations research, there is only one trade off, and that tra so trade off is nothing but compromise. The compromise is always between computational time and computational quality. So when I say compromise, if you want the best solution, if you want a solution of 100% quality, then you should be ready to sacrifice computational time, meaning you may have to wait for sometimes days, sometimes weeks to get the optimal solution. But let's say you're a business practitioner. You just want a quick solution. I mean, you just don't have the time to wait for the optimal solution for hours together. That's where, so basically we are trying to sacrifice the quality and then we get quick solutions. And the methodologies that are used for generating those quick and near optimal solutions. I'm, I'm using the word near optimal. They will not give you optimal solutions. Very rarely they will give you optimal solutions. Near optimal solutions, these methodologies are called heuristics and meta heuristics. Let me summarize whatever I discussed so far. It's been half an hour since we started. Integer programming problems, usually they are difficult to solve. Uh, smaller problem instances can be solved to optimality quickly, but larger problem instances, when I say larger, real life problem instances are difficult to solve. When it comes to solving integer programming problems, there are two broad categories of solution methodologies. First category is exact technique. Second category is heuristics or meta heuristics. Exact techniques are methodologies that are to be employed when we are keen on obtaining only the optimal solution. We, want, we don't want to sacrifice on the quality and hence we will wait for months also to get the optimal solution. That's where we make use of branch and bound branch and cut and branch and price branch and price is also called as column generation that's called column generation approach heuristics and meta heuristics is a is a framework of methodologies that are used for solving difficult problems such as np hard and np complete problems by generating quick solutions the, the only disadvantage with heuristics and meta heuristics is their quality may not be, they, they will always result in near optimal solution. They will not give us optimal solution. So that's the summary so far. And when we talk about heuristics and meta heuristics, again, there is a fundamental difference. Anyone, can someone tell me, I'm sure some of you are already practicing researchers. Can you please tell me what exactly is the first difference between heuristics and meta heuristics? Are they one and the same? Is there a difference between heuristic and meta heuristic? What does the word meta signify? Okay, just because you are silent, I'm presuming that you're asking me to say the answer. Heuristics are thumb rules. Heuristics are intuitive techniques. Basically, heuristics, the, the fundamental difference between heuristics and meta heuristics is that heuristics are problem specific, whereas meta heuristics are problem independent. I mean, whatever be the optimization problem at hand, one can use meta heuristics. Whereas Heuristics are specific to the problem. I will I'll show you an example also. Heuristics are quite problem specific, whereas meta heuristics are problem independent. That's the important difference between heuristics and meta heuristics. The word meta implies higher level, higher level heuristics. So GA stands for genetic algorithms. SA stands for simulated annealing. ACO stands for ant colony optimization and TS stands for taboo search. Apart from these four, we also have something called particle swarm optimization, PSO, and we also have something called 
ALNS, Adaptive Local Neighborhood Search. Likewise, there are quite a few meta heuristic search techniques that are available. Now, uh, let me go to, I think, okay. The first question, while you develop heuristics or meta heuristics for your problem, the first thing as a researcher you are expected to do before you jump on to use heuristics or meta heuristics for your problem is you have to establish the computational complexity of your problem i'm repeating before you start working on heuristics or meta heuristics for an optimization problem it is the researcher's job to prove that the problem you are working on actually falls into either a np hard category problem or a np complete problem without you proving that particular part you just can't go to heuristics or meta heuristics so this is the first thing people expect in a research paper also so i can't just think of a problem and then say i'm using genetic algorithm so let me write a paper that will not make sense at all because what if the problem you have chosen is very very easy that can be used that can be solved using simple excel solver so you have to prove that when i say proof i'm not asking you to make theoretical proofs i mean if you are good enough to contribute or to develop theoretical proofs well and good you can many a times proving the computational complexity you need computer science perspective which may not be available with everyone but usually what we do is we try to at least cite papers that say this problem is a proven np hard problem or a proven np complete problem by citing the relevant article that that had appeared in the literature in the past at least you can say that i have already shown someone has already proved that this problem is np hard or np complete so that gives you the license for applying meta heuristics please keep this in mind now uh, when i say np hard np complete there is this paper that appeared uh, sometime in 1980s gary and johnson the name of the authors are the names of the authors are gary and johnson they proved that they, they actually listed down a set of 21 problems traveling salesman problem satisfiability set covering so on and so forth they proved that all these 21 problems are np complete so if we are able to model our problem as one of these 21 problems then our problem becomes np hard so don't don't get confused at least uh, i i will uh, apart from the powerpoint presentation i'll also try to share the article authored by gary and johnson to help you understand what is this np hard and np complete from theoretical computer science they have a completely different meaning but from or perspective we have to prove that indeed these are difficult optimization problems that's our job so once you prove or once you cite a relevant article saying i am working on so and so problem which has already been proven as a np hard problem that makes it a fertile ground for applying one of the meta heuristic techniques now uh, let me show you so you can see there we have all these problems we have different problems now heuristics as i told you earlier these are simple solution methodologies or in one sense these are simple thumb rules they don't have any mathematical basis they may work for a particular problem may not work for another problem whereas meta heuristics are higher level search procedures that are applicable for a wide variety of optimization problems in simple terms heuristic is problem specific whereas meta heuristic is independent of the problem any questions so far please no sir okay good thank you if there are no more questions then let me show you uh, how to develop a simple heuristic for a traveling salesman problem because the reason why i'm choosing traveling salesman problem is it is easy to explain concepts using traveling salesman problem i will very well i can there i mean there are plenty of uh, optimization problems that can be chosen but just because 
everyone can easily relate to. I understand that from the profile of the participants, not everyone is is an operations uh, faculty here. So taking the wide uh, variety of backgrounds into consideration, I'm just choosing traveling salesman problem. Now take a look at this. What am I going to do now is look at this. I will I'll generate a 10 city traveling salesman problem. Just give me uh, one minute. I'll quickly generate a traveling salesman problem. Now, as you know, uh, so we have 1000 over here. Now look at this. This is the distance matrix. All that you are seeing on the screen is a distance matrix. So we cannot travel from city one to city one. That's why the distance is thousand. In fact, uh, if you are an OR researcher, you know that it's actually big M. It is not thousand. It's a big M. That's what it means. So one to one travel is forbidden. Two to two travel is forbidden. Wherever it is forbidden, we, we usually give a big number there. So thousand is a big number there. Now I have to generate the distance matrix. For this, what am I going to do is I'll use a rand between function. Rand between. Let's say the distance is anywhere between 50 to 200 or 50 to 150 kilometers. The distance between cities. So I'm simply going to generate all of this. Now you can see there, I'm actually generating them randomly so that uh, I can, I need not have to waste a lot of time on generating the problem. Let me show you how to get this done. I'm going to share the Excel sheet also with you so you need not have to worry about it. I have already shared the Excel sheets pertaining to Monte Carlo simulation. I will do the same thing again here as well. And then here is the next one. And finally, here is the next one. So now what am I going to do is having generated the upper diagonal. So this is the distance matrix. Now I'm going to copy it as it is. Copy, open a new sheet and then paste it as values. Having pasted it as values, now I have to fill the lower diagonal elements. So copy and then transpose. Again, copy, transpose. Basically, I'm filling up that particular matrix. Just give me a minute. Let me finish that off. Now this is a 10 by 10 traveling salesman problem. I'm going to show you how to develop heuristics or what kind of heuristics exist for this problem and how to evaluate its quality. So until you listen till the end, you may want to be a little patient. Just save your questions till the end. I will answer all the questions patiently. If you think there is not adequate time, we can even discuss over email. I'll share my email also with you so we can discuss if you are further interested on anything else. Now look at this. This is the distance matrix for 10 cities. Now this is a 10 by 10 problem. So where we are, we have a salesperson who is at one of these cities and we are interested in determining a route for this salesperson which involves traveling or visiting rest of the nine cities and then coming back to the city where he started. Now think about a heuristic. So if I were to solve this problem, so now look look at this. This is an integer programming problem because variables will take only integer values, in fact binaries. If I have to use complete enumeration for this problem, I will have to solve at least uh, 36 lakh solutions. And then among these 36 lakhs, find the best solution. This is one way of solving this problem. You have to evaluate all the 36 lakhs, 28,000 or whatever number that is. So it is about 36 lakh, 28,800. Those many number of solutions have to be solved. Well, if you ask me, Ram, can't you solve it? Well, you have to have the patience to solve it. It's not very easy, countably infinite number of solutions. So you have to have a lot of patience for doing this. Another way of doing it is, why not develop a simple heuristic for this problem? Okay, please see here. I'm going to show you how to develop a heuristic for this problem. I'm sure many of you might be knowing this, but just keeping everyone in mind, let me show you 
there is something called nearest neighborhood heuristic the name of the heuristic is nearest neighborhood heuristic now what this heuristic means is very simple you take any city you like whichever city you want to start with let's say i want to start from city one okay from city one i'm going to go to the next city whichever is the nearest so if i want to choose whichever is the nearest city i will look at the distance look at the distance there among those numbers the smallest one happens to be 69 which is city 10 so i'm going to write city 10 from city 10 i cannot go back to city 1 once again so i have to visit some other city whichever is the next nearest city as you can see there is 63 over there which is node number 6 so 6 from city 6 again instead of going to cities 1 and 10 i have to choose rest of the numbers so you can see there is 57 over there which is the lowest so from 6 we are going to go to 8 and from 8 again i have to choose the smallest number as you can see city 5 is the smallest number because the distance is only 51 kilometers and from city 5 i have to choose the smallest number so even though 51 is there it will be it means i'm going back to 8 so without going back to city 8 i have to choose a smaller number so there is city 7 and then from city 7 there are only two choices i think uh, 2 3 4 uh, and 9 are left so 2 is 123 141 148 and then 127 so 123 happens to be the cheapest am i correct so we have to go to city 2 i cannot go to 5 or i cannot go to any of the earlier visited cities from 2 we are left with only 3 and 9 those are the only two cities that are left so among 3 and 9 3 is 145 whereas 9 is 60 so i'll choose 9 as you can see the only city that is left is city 3 and finally we'll come back to city 1 this is called a heuristic because we have obtained a solution very very quickly we, we are not sure about the quality of the solution as yet we will talk about the quality a little later but if you look at the computational time that we took even though it's a 10 factorial uh, 10 city problem using our intuition using thumb rule the thumb rule is the nearest neighbor that's the thumb rule we are able to come up with a solution now let's try to understand what is the distance what is the total distance covered using this particular city so for this i, I will just use a small formula i'll explain you the formula till later uh, index and then here is the problem so dollar h dollar nine i'll explain you a little later but just be a little patient comma uh, 1 comma 10 okay and then i'm simply going to drag and drop this all the way up to here so total distance this is equal to sum of all of this as you can see we have traveled a total distance of 650 kilometers so as per the route and the route is from city 1 we are going to go to city 10 from 10 you go to city 6 6 to 8 likewise without repeating any of the earlier visited cities we are covering each and every city and the total distance traveled is 650 kilometers now here is one question how good is this answer getting a solution is first point usually we stop there even while re writing research papers we just think our job is over once we get the solution remember there are two things while you deal with heuristics and meta heuristics you should obtain the solution that's first part second part is you should also comment on the quality of the solution you should say whether that solution is very good good reasonable okay bad pathetic you have to comment on the quality of the solution that is quite important while you write research papers on heuristics and meta heuristics 
So can someone tell me how good is that particular solution whose total distance is 650? How good is that solution? How do I know? Uh, on day one, there was quite a bit of interaction, but today, unfortunately, not many people are volunteering to be part of the discussion. Are you able to follow or not? Well, you are, we are getting, sir. We are getting, sir. Okay. okay. How about others? Only Dr. Jitendra is speaking. How about others? I, I understand that most of your college faculty. And yes, sir, we are getting the points. Sorry, Dr. Shrizer, can could you please repeat? 84. Second floor is it was not very clear. Okay, at least I'm presuming you're able to follow until now. Anyway, I'll explain. So having developed one heuristic and having got an answer, there are two ways of comparing the quality. I'll, so one way is relative performance. The second way is absolute performance. I'm repeating. You can comment on the quality of the solution, heuristic solution, in two ways. One is called relative performance. The second one is absolute performance. Relative performance means we are going to generate some other heuristic and then see how our heuristic compares with that of its performance. That is one way of comparing the performance of a heuristic. Absolute performance means Without any other heuristic, we are going to give an absolute percentage. Let me explain you both approaches. Relative performance. As I said, one is nearest neighborhood heuristic. Now, using Excel, I'm going to show you how to solve a traveling salesman problem. For the please see here, I'm going to take an initial solution. I would need initial solution uh, to generate a heuristic solution. It actually uses evolutionary computation. Excel has an inbuilt solver. I will show you how to solve this particular problem. Okay, carefully listen. The solution that I'm choosing as root solution is as follows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look, this is the sequence that I'm going to use. I'm going to start with one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, up to ten. Now, the eleventh city will always be the first city. I'm repeating, this is the 11th city. 11th city will always be the first city. Now, what are we going to do is, I will have to find, first of all, what is the total distance traveled by this particular, if we use this particular route, what is the total distance traveled? So please see here, this is what we do. You have to start with an equal to, and then, use this function index i n d e x index equal to index now if you look at the excel format just put a bracket there it is showing array it is asking for array in this case the array is this data table this 10 by 10 matrix just because we want to use this matrix for all the other combinations I'm going to put a dollar mark there so that the array remains the same. Dollar $H, dollar $9, dollar $Q, dollar $18. I'm repeating equal to index and then in the array we are going to write that. Then, uh, where is this? Okay, comma. It is asking for row number and column number. So all that you need to do is just use this particular first cell as the row number, comma, the column number is two. Basically what this function does is, it will look in that particular table and then return whatever is the distance between city one and city two, whatever is the distance that is entered in the table will be returned as the answer. So I'm closing the brackets, you see there, 
I got 83 as the answer. Now, if you look at the table, the distance between 1 to 2 is 83. That's how I got 83. I'm repeating it. Please see there. Equal to index. The, the table is nothing but the, uh, the array is nothing but the table. Just because we are going to drag and drop this particular formula, I'm using dollar symbol over there so that the table remains constant. And we want to compute the distance between cities one and two. So we choose the first city and the second city. Having done this, now I'm simply going to drag and drop till this point. As you can see, the distance between two to three is 145. Look at this. The distance between two to three is 145. Similarly, the distance between 3 to 4 is 143. So 3 to 4 is 143. Likewise, it computes the distance between each and every pair of cities as per the route given over here. Now, the total distance traveled is nothing but the sum of all these distances. Now you can see there, the total is 1074. The total distance in kilometers is 1074. Now you can say, wow, amazing. Maybe this is a random solution. A random solution gives 1074 as the answer, whereas nearest neighborhood heuristic gives 650 as the answer. So we, this is called relative performance. You are comparing your heuristics performance with that of rest of the heuristics. Now, the only problem with this approach is we don't know how far these answers are from the actual optimal solution. We know that our heuristic is definitely better than the random heuristic. But what if the random or what if the optimal solution is 200 or 300? Then there is a huge difference between the optimal solution and our heuristics answer. Okay, we'll come to that. Now, let's take a look at this. Having obtained or having generated a random solution, how do we improve this solution using Excel Solver? Please see here, this is what you are supposed to do. Go to data. In the data, there is something called Solver. Click on Solver. So once you click on Solver, this is the dialog box that appears. Set objective. We, our objective is this the total distance and then we are going to minimize the total distance that's why i'm choosing minimize by changing variable cells basically it is asking which variables or which cells are to be changed so i'm going to choose all these 10 cells because those are it's a 10 city problem i need not have to choose the 11th cell because 11th cell and the first cell both are in the same and then subject to constraints. I don't know how many of you know the mathematical model of traveling salesman problem. It involves elimination of subtour constraints. But while solving it using Excel, you need not have to worry about it. All that we are going to say is we choose all these 10 positions and simply say those have to be different, all different. D I F all different. And that's the only constraint that we are going to add. And then we are going to choose the method as evolutionary. It's not simplex and it's not GRG nonlinear. We are going to use evolutionary. Before clicking on solve, don't click solve immediately. Your computer may hang up. Click on options. In the options, you'll get a box, dialog box like this. You have to specify a maximum time limit you have when to terminate the algorithm i'm going to type 30 30 seconds i want the computer to give me the best solution that it can find within 30 seconds so i typed 30 over there and then i'm going to ask the computer to solve i don't know whether you can see it in my computer at the bottom left there are some iterations that are going on you, you may not be able to see it in, in the screen, but if you are actually solving it on your computer, look at the bottom left. It will be showing something called incumbent. What is the best solution obtained, etc. 
So the evolutionary computation mechanism, the meta heuristic is already embedded in Excel solver. And at the end of 30 seconds, it is going to show a dialog box. So please see there. The maximum time limit was reached. So if you if you click on continue anyway, it will go on perpetually for two hours, three hours. So we are not going to do that. Please see, I'm going to stop. Now I'll, I'll say OK. So we started with 1074 as the solution. And now what is the answer that it is suggesting? 662. So as you can see, in these 30 seconds, the solution has been improved significantly from 1074. It has almost brought it down by close to 40 to 45 percent. And now what is the new solution? 10, 5, 7, 8, 6, 3, 9, 2, 4, 1. Remember, the starting city does not matter here because it's like a 24 hour clock. It's like a 12 hour clock. It doesn't matter where you start because it's a circuit. As you can see, the, the solution, the algorithm has returned 662. Now you might ask me, can we still expect further improvement if the computer were to to be given more time of course yes maybe if you set a time limit of five minutes maybe it might search further and then give you a better solution so that's that's a trade-off that's why i said there's a trade-off there's a trade-off between computational time and computational quality if you have time then give more time so that you are likely to get a better solution if you don't have time just put a time limit say 30 seconds one minute and then find the best solution is this clear? Should I repeat any portion? Sir, up to which extent it will get completed? Otherwise, it will get minimized, minimized after each and every iteration. Uh, you are saying if we don't put up limits until what time it will go on, is it? Right, sir. Right, sir. Yeah, it, it will go on for at least next four hours or six hours. It will eat away all the computers RAM. Usually, computers hang up. If you are working on larger problems like this, your computer is likely to hang up. So it is always better to put a limit on how much time are you going to give. Okay, sir. Oh, okay, good. Now, so let's come back. This is how one can generate a, a heuristic solution for traveling salesman problem using Excel solver. Now it, it did not answer our first question. How good is the answer? We got one heuristic which gave us 650 as the answer. Another heuristic gave us 662 as the answer. But we don't know. This is only relative performance. All that we can say is the nearest neighbor heuristic is definitely better than the evolutionary computations heuristic. But it's only relative performance. If you want to know the absolute performance, what should I do? One way of doing it is let me find out what is the optimal solution and then compare the heuristic solution with that of the optimal solution. You might say, Ram, that's bizarre because if I can find the optimal solution for a traveling salesman problem, I don't need heuristics at all. Just because it is so difficult to find optimal solution for uh, this problem, I'm actually going for heuristics and meta heuristics. So that is why now we are going to use something called lower bound we are going to generate lower bound for this problem now please pay attention this is a very simple concept it's just that you have to pay attention what is a lower bound uh, imagine out of these 36 lakh 28800 solutions these 36 lakh solutions will not be below a certain number. You take any solution. There has to be a minimum distance that must have been traveled in order to cover all the 10 cities. So if we are able to generate that particular number, at least we can say that even in the worst case, this is the total distance that you should have traveled. That is called lower bound. Lower bound means the total distance for covering all the 10 cities cannot be less than a certain number. What is that minimum number? I'm repeating lower bound means the Z value, the total distance traveled 
cannot be less than a minimum value. What is that minimum value? Is called as lower bound. Now, for example, if I say the total distance traveled is only, let's say, 50, will you agree with it? If I say 50 is the lower bound, will you agree with it? 5 0. Can 50 be the lower bound for this problem? Uh, 50 can't because a lower, a lower number is here, it is around 50, 69, 66. How, Very sir, good. how it Very good. You're, you're correct, Dr. Jitendra. You're correct. Yes. 50 okay. cannot be possible for this problem because the smallest number here itself is 51. So if the minimum distance itself is 51, how can someone complete all the 10 cities with 50 kilometers? So it's impossible. Based on this premise, we are going to develop lower bound now. Now please carefully see here. Look at city one. From city one, the traveling salesman, I mean the salesperson has to definitely travel to one city. I mean among the rest of the nine cities, he has to definitely travel to one city. You take any of these nine cities. What is the minimum number that will be uh, 69? He has to minimum travel 69 kilometers from city one. Whatever be the solution from city one, if you are moving to some other city, you have to travel minimum of 69 kilometers. Similarly, look at city two. If you reach, if the salesperson reaches city two, in order to travel to any other city, he has to travel a minimum of 60 or look at this 53. There is a 53 over there. Minimum distance that he has to travel is 53 kilometers. Likewise, I'm going to write minimum of each of these rows. Now, let me drag and drop. Now, oh, okay. Let's see there. The total. This is equal to sum of all of this. Look at this. From any city, even if we consider someone is traveling to the next nearest city, they have to travel a total of. 580 kilometers which means there cannot be a solution among those 36 lakh 28,800 solutions there cannot be a feasible solution whose z value is less than 580 it will definitely be either 580 or more than 580 that's the minimum distance that the salesperson has to travel do you agree with this logic and this is called lower bound. Now I can say instead of comparing your heuristics performance with that of another heuristic. Okay, please see here. Heuristic performance is equal to heuristic solution minus lower bound divided by sorry, divided by lower bound. So which is nothing but this is equal to 650 minus 580 divided by 580 this is about 12 percent so we can at least say that even in the worst case assuming 580 itself is the optimal solution even in the worst case my heuristic is just 12 percent away from the optimal solution so this is how you can comment on the absolute quality of your heuristic solution. I'm repeating it. In order to first, so there is something called lower bound. In order to report the absolute performance of a heuristic, we need the concept of lower bound. Lower bound means the objective function value cannot be lesser than that particular value for any feasible solution. That's called a lower bound. Now, for the traveling salesman problem, we just used our intuition. 
any case if you reach city one you have to travel to some other city you travel to any other city your minimum you are going to travel at least 69 kilometers having reached city two at the minimum you are going to travel 53 kilometers likewise if i consider the minimum distance that the salesperson is going to travel from each of the cities the resultant total distance can be a lower bound so the quality of heuristic can be compared with that of the lower bound and then the absolute performance can be reported rather than relative performance any questions i'll take up one more example just to just to make the concept little more concrete but before that if there are any questions i'll be happy to answer fine if there are no questions i'm presuming that so far it is okay now let me take you through another example to help to help you understand what is this concept of lower bound sir nayapur road section 64 is not covered sir uh dr shridhar doc hello would you please uh, yeah hello the nairobi solution one city is not covered 84 is not covered sorry i did not get your question dr shridhar the nearest neighborhood the heuristic solution yes then the nearest city is considered in that one city 4 is not covered sir oh city 4 is not covered city okay. 1 2 3 how did i miss it oh how did i miss it then okay one ten let, let's quickly do that and then ten to six okay six to eight oh four is not considered okay then eight uh, let's go to five all right and from five we are going to go to seven okay and from seven uh two is there all right and from two yeah i think we can go to four and then four to nine Okay, let's consider four. And from four, the next one is, we are left with only three, nine. Uh, yeah, three and nine from four. So three is 143, whereas nine is, so let's go to nine then, and then three, and then one. So Speaking let me drag and, yeah, let me drag and drop. Okay. So nine to three, is 85 and okay as you can see the total distance traveled now becomes 695 kilometers and heuristic performance will be 695 okay so it is about 20 percent away from the optimal solution so this is how the nearest neighborhood heuristic works and whereas evolutionary computation solution has a better answer Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sridhar, for pointing it out. It was out of my oversight. Okay, now let's move further and let's work on a job, uh, yeah, a job shop scheduling problem. Let me quickly explain you how to get the concept of lower bound. Please see here. Let's say there are three machines. Or, uh, yeah, okay. Jobs, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six jobs and there are three machines. It's a flow shop. Uh, let me type it here. These are machines. And then let me type some numbers here 9, 11, 12, 8, 14, 17. And then 20, 13, 11, 15, 10, and then 12. And then job. Uh, so other machine uh, 12, 8, 14. Uh, seven, uh, seven. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, go ahead, please. Oh, now this is a flow shop. Now this is a flow shop. Sorry, my voice is uh, getting Sorry, echoed. Voice is, uh, so, someone has to mute their mic, please. Yeah, okay. So there are three machines and there are six jobs. I'm sure you must have heard about something called Johnson's algorithm. It is used in flow shop scheduling. 
but remember johnson's algorithm can be used only under two machines case if you have more than two machines there is something called cds heuristic campbell dick and smith heuristic anyway that that's not the purpose okay let's see how to get the concept of lower bound here and here is the root sequence that i'm choosing 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 5 and then 5 to 6 let's say we are feeding the jobs in this particular sequence and we are interested in minimizing make span make span implies completion time of the last job on the last machine that's called make span completion time of the last job on the last machine so let me let me take this particular sequence please see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh in time out time in time out time in and then out so this in time out time is for machine 1 this is for machine 2 and uh, this is for machine 3 now see here if we are feeding these jobs in this particular sequence job 0 enters at the time 0 comes out at 9 hours or 9 minutes whichever unit you choose immediately it enters machine 2 at 9 comes out at 29 and enters machine 3 at 29 comes out at 41 similarly job 2 has to wait until job 1 gets processed so it has to wait for 9 minutes and then comes out at 20 minutes because the processing time is 9 plus 11 20 now it cannot immediately enter at 20 because machine 2 is busy till 29 minutes so it has to wait 29 and then it gets processed so 42 by 42 machine 3 is already free so it will directly enter 42 and then come out at 50 minutes now again job 3 on machine 1 until 20 nothing can happen comes out at 32 by then machine 2 is still busy so it has to wait so it has to wait till 42 and then enters and then comes out at 53 at 53 it is free so 53 it enters and then 53 plus 14 is 67 okay again going back let me quickly finish this off enters at 32 comes out at 40 again till 53 it has to be busy 53 plus 15 is 68 and then 68 to machine 3 is 75 please let me know whether the computations are correct or not and then enters at 40 job 5 comes out at 64 again it has to wait till 68 and then 68 plus 10 is 78 again 78 comes out at uh, 91 finally sir uh, sir 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 Sir, one minute. Sir, yes. in the fifth row, forty plus fourteen, fifty-four. Sir. Oh, forty plus fourteen is fifty-four. Okay, thank you. So fifty-four. But of course, uh, I think this is correct, right? Until it has to wait till sixty-eight. Forty plus fourteen is fifty-four. But even though uh, job four enters at only fifty-three, yeah, it is correct. Okay. Now the last one. enters at 54 and then comes out at uh, 71 54 plus 17 is uh, 71 by 78 until it has to wait till 78 78 plus 12 is 90 and then enters at 91 comes out at 101 so for this particular sequence the make span is 101 now this is one heuristic in fact this is a random heuristic where i chose jobs in in a random sequence 1 2 3 4 5 6 now the question is again in order to comment on the quality of the heuristic solution there are multiple ways one can make use of cds heuristic please take it down uh, sorry cds campbell dick and smith so this heuristic is used when you have more than two machines but as i told you earlier if you are comparing a heuristic's performance with that of another heuristic it will only be a relative performance 
if you want an absolute performance it is better to generate lower bound can someone think and then tell me what could be a lower bound in this case how to generate a lower bound in this case what is the minimum time that i mean this is what lower bound concept is again I'm... minimum processing time on each machine sorry go ahead seven, seven. machine three uh, job number four is having sub minimum time seven okay no that cannot okay let, let me repeat the concept of lower bound okay in whichever sequence you feed the jobs so there are six jobs the maximum number of sequences is six factorial again in whichever sequence you feed the jobs there is a minimum make span that you will have to incur your your make span cannot be lesser than this particular minimum value what is that minimum value in whichever sequence you process the jobs we need an estimate of that what is the minimum time that the make span will usually take regardless of the sequence of processing someone gave the answer but again they are they are uh, remaining mum now i heard someone saying something yes we shall go ahead sir it will be uh, summation of all the machining time because summation, that time uh, that summation, summation of all the time all the for machine one two three no look at this uh, vishal let me write sum here let me compute the sum sum of 71 ah now you are saying it is the sum of 71 81 and 64 is that what are you saying yes sir. yes yes it cannot it cannot be because uh, no it is parallel sequencing i mean it is parallel processing right we shall we are not waiting for machine one to complete and then take up machine two it's parallel processing yes. while machine one is processing machine two is also parallelly processing okay any other answer please so minimum time uh, it may be 64 no okay now dr jitendra tell me should you consider the minimum time or the maximum time we should consider maximum, maximum time. we should consider the maximum time so look at this please let me help you 81 on this 81 is the lower bound here the reason is very simple it's because in whichever Understood. sequence you you feed the jobs this is an engineering constraint the processing time is an engineering constraint that a manager cannot change if a job has to take 13 minutes it will have to be there for 13 minutes there is only the waiting time that comes in between whereas assuming my jobs do not wait at all even in that case the minimum time that the jobs spend on the system is 81 minutes so i can compare my 101 with that of 81 so let's make a quick comparison quality is equal to 101 minus 81 divided by 81 so this is equal to 101 minus 81 let me quickly write it which is about 25 percent so we can say that even in the worst case my heuristic will not give provide a solution that is more than 25 percent away from the optimal solution remember this 81 is not indeed optimal the optimal solution may lie somewhere between 101 and 81 but to be on the safer side as a worst case possibility we are saying that even if we consider 81 as the optimal solution even in that case my heuristic is only 25 percent away from the optimal this is how not only do we report the quality of the solution we also comment on how what is the quality with respect to an absolute number with respect to a lower bound so this is how we go about generating lower bounds and then report the quality of the solutions with respect to the lower bounds 
while writing research papers and this is quite used in teaching classes also uh, as as faculty you are expected to tell them two things while using heuristics and meta heuristics getting a solution is one quite important second commenting on the quality of the solution is also equally important so that is this is how lower bounds are actually used in practice okay in the interest of time i am unable to complete a couple of more concepts i, I was about to teach something called take a look over there lp relaxation and lagrangian relaxation so these are two techniques that are quite used for generating lower bounds however i will try to share whatever notes i have with me with respect to lp and lagrangian relaxation you can please take a look at it and in case if you have any doubts you can always contact me over email my slides will be fairly self explanatory so take a look at the slides maybe after the session with sir, this can i one more one more question sir yeah yeah please sir. Uh, sir, uh, in the in that uh, um, in this problem, so we, uh, hmm. can we use this uh, uh, Johnson, Johnson's rules advanced version that is combination of this uh, A and B machine, hmm. Uh, hmm. job uh, machine A and B to be one and hmm. B and C to be another, then hmm. uh, find out the left and right uh, rules of the six. Absolutely, uh, you can, Doctor Jitendra, you can. But at the end of the day, do you agree? You are only going to get a heuristic solution, right? Okay, okay. Because here but, we are finding out the how, how much we are optimizing to those. So yes. by, by getting found only, we can make it the optimizing. So, okay. Exactly. That is the purpose. Okay. Our objective is not to solve the problem. Our objective is okay. to generate a lower bound so that we can comment on the quality of the solution. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. All right. Any other question, please? Well, if you uh, don't have any questions, uh, uh, hello. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Shubham. Hello. Uh, so instead of using Excel, can we use R for faster computation? You can. If you are good at R, you can always use R. No problem. Excel is only classroom illustration purpose. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Not everyone is quite comfortable with R. So that's why I just took Excel. In fact, I use only C programming. I don't use Excel. I use Cplex, C-P-L-E-X. That's the solver that we use for solving optimization problems. Just because not everyone will have a Cplex version there, I, I, I'm just showing. See, most importantly, these are all concepts. And for explaining a concept, the software doesn't matter. Any, any software will do. Okay, if there are no more questions, uh, I'll be happy to take your leave. So you can look at the chat window. This is my email ID. In case if you need any help with, with any sort of these optimization problems, I'll be happy to help you out and then collaborate with you. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sridhar. I think I I'm done with my presentation. Uh, yes, sir. Mm. There are participants who have no more queries. We'll conclude the session. Thank you very much, Dr. Ram Kumar sir, for uh, sure. sharing the valuable sure. information related to the evaluation of the quality of heuristic solutions. How you can evaluate the level of the solution, what you got with the heuristic methods. That uh, concept will be helpful for us to evaluate our solutions. This uh, will be helpful for the, all the participants uh, regarding their uh, work related with uh, searching the solutions for the many types of optimization problems. Thank you very much, yes. sir, for sparing your Thank valuable you. time. It was a pleasure. Hope you'll Thank have you. fruitful interactions uh, in future also. I'm looking forward to. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. Good day.